How's Britain doing on its climate objectives? Is it getting down to net zero? Is it really reducing emissions as fast as it says it is? There are lots of questions when it comes to the data on climate change and indeed on carbon emissions. And I want to start by just kind of going through some of that data. And over the course of the coming months, we're going to have a lot more of this stuff coming up for COP26. And we're going to be trying to ask questions about that data in the same way we've been asking questions about the, the COVID data as well. And let's start with kind of the big story, greenhouse gas emission. This shows you UK domestic greenhouse gas emissions over the course of the last few decades. Starts in 1990, because that's kind of the benchmark year that a lot of people count this stuff uh, about. It's already always getting emissions down from that 1990 level down towards net zero by 2050. And where are I with the latest uh, data? Well, we've just had this out from the government. Uh, they say that emissions fell by 8.9% in 2020. And just to put that into perspective, that is probably the data. So there's some question marks over some of the data sources, but it looks like it's the biggest year on year fall that we've seen so it's 1926. That was the year of the general strike. And in a way, actually, there's kind of an analogy there, isn't there? Uh, we had lockdown, obviously, in 2020. Vast parts of the economy basically shut down. Similar thing with the general strike. You had a shutdown in activity, and that forced activity into, and also emissions to go down very sharply, far, far more sharply, actually, than this, down by about 30 but the upshot of all of that is that the UK is getting closer to that goal. Where is the goal? Well, look, it is net zero. You can see so down towards zero by 2050. That's just a straight line that I've kind of extrapolated out there. And where are we at the moment? Well, we're more or less halfway. Not quite halfway, actually. We're not over 50% in terms of our reduction yet. And it is worth saying as well, you've probably kind of guessed this, but this year that we're in at the moment, so 2021, we're likely to see an increase in emissions because we had that fall, that lockdown fall last time around. So we're not quite halfway yet, and obviously we're halfway in terms of dates, in terms of the years that have passed, 30 years from 1990, 30 years to go, but we're not yet halfway in terms of the emissions, so more needs to be done on that. Um, but let's not lose sight of the fact that a lot has been done. And actually, in, in an interesting sense, like those charts went back to 1990. This one goes all the way back to 1855, so the latter stages of the Industrial Revolution. So you can, what you can see here is carbon emissions, coal, you know, there's coal-fired power stations, uh, coal sod has come in there. Uh, you've got steelworks. The carbon emissions went up and up and up. And then they peaked around kind of the early 1970s. And actually, the interesting thing is they've been falling ever since. And partly, we'll get onto this in a moment, partly that's down to you know, actually cutting emissions, more efficient vehicles, all of that stuff that we know about. Um, you have more kind of uh, renewable power stations, all of that. But partly, actually, it's also down to economic trends, and we'll discuss those uh, in a moment. But for the time being, let's just ask that question. So of those emissions, just over 400 uh, million tonnes of emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, where are they actually coming from? So 414 million tonnes of carbon emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. I keep saying carbon, greenhouse, it's mostly carbon, but there are other greenhouse gases, as you'll see. I'm going to break it down, though. You know, a lot of people would say the obvious big thing here is power stations, energy supply. Actually, that's only about, it was kind of 19%, uh, and that includes refineries. So that's not the biggest chunk uh, of what this uh, 414. Uh, business is, you know, relatively big as well, so that's just businesses doing their jobs. But transport is the biggest chunk of all. And here's the interesting thing. While that bit, energy supply, is getting smaller and smaller as you've got, you know, more wind power, more solar power and so on, more renewables, less coal-fired power stations, um, the transport chunk isn't really getting that much smaller that, that quickly. Now, that might change when you have electrification of vehicles, but that really is why a lot of focus is going to be on transport, uh, on vehicle electrification in the next few years. Although some would say, hang on, the government is freezing fuel duty year after year. That might be part of the explanation for why those emissions are still pretty high. And by the way, not going down, I think, as much as a lot of people had expected uh, during lockdown. Down quite a bit, but still, you expect that to go up in the next few years. Then, this is interesting, Residential. Now, this basically, that's your, that's your boilers. You know, that's, that's houses across the country. And actually, residential could soon be bigger than energy supply. So that is part of the explanation for why this is going to be difficult to get down to net zero, because a lot of people are going to have to replace their boilers, because that's going to be an ever bigger part of this, uh, this donut, as it were, of emissions that we're talking our way through. And then you've got industry. So steel, for instance, cement, you know, making these things actually generates quite a lot of carbon. And we're not quite sure actually how to deal with that. Uh, you've got other CO2 emissions, and then you've got other greenhouse gases like methane. So add that all up, and then you've got the 414 that we're talking about. It just shows, though, it's not just about kind of shutting down coal-fired power stations. It's about the entire spectrum of activities 
that we do across the economy. Now, another thing, this is a really important thing, and, you know, uh, we'll probably kind of encounter this a few times over the course of the next few months. When we're talking about this, 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 just, this is going back to that original kind of line. It's a slightly different uh, series I've looked at here. But it's going back to the original line of greenhouse gas emissions going down and down and down. Great news, isn't it? Um, but bear in mind, OK, I'm going to fill that in. Bear in mind, what we're talking about here is domestic emissions. So UK domestic emissions from anything that's happening within this country. But here's the thing, we all know... There's also goods that we import from China and other countries around the world which involve burning carbon uh, to make them. And so how do you account for that? The answer is you can start to extrapolate that. And so we have a different data set here that kind of extrapolates that and adds that on. So if we wanted to add on emissions that came from other countries around the world, well, here's what it would look like. If you added on emissions that came from imports from Europe, well, add those on there. Add on the emissions that come from the US, from China as well, and indeed from the rest of the world. And now have a look at that. So you've got domestic emissions at the bottom. Looks like it's getting lower and lower and lower, and it is indeed. But then you've got this other chunk of emissions which are imported emissions. So when you've got the total including imports, let's compare those two lines. But they're quite different, aren't they? So we're talking about net zero, but it's net zero for which of these? And the short answer is, according to the law, it's net zero getting those domestic emissions uh, down to zero. And on that front, we're doing pretty well. We, you, you saw the chart earlier. Um, this is a slightly different data series, so it says we're only down by 31%. But even so, the key thing here is note the difference. Domestic emissions down by 30% total emissions. So when you include imports, stuff from China, down by 16%, down by barely half of that total. So which, which are we actually going to look at net zero? Are we going to look at domestic or are we going to look at the total? When it comes to domestic, we might well stand a chance of getting there. When you look at the total, we're a long way off that. And so it's worth just bearing that in mind when you hear about all of these numbers in the next few months. The other thing I want to do actually is show you what looks like a similar chart, but it's making a slightly different point. Um, and this is quite important as well, OK? This is, again, just domestic emissions, and it shows the UK, and we're down by kind of 40%. Depends on how you measure it, but we're down quite a lot uh, since the beginning of the 1990s. Let's look at other countries and how they're doing. So this is just their emissions. It's not imported emissions. It's just how much they are emitting within their own countries. It's a comparable series here, slightly different data series, like I say. But it shows you that Germany emissions fell as well, not by as much as the UK. How much of that is down to actual kind of efficiency measures, actual green measures, and how much of it is down to the fact that Germany remains a big industrial centre, because you saw that last chart, didn't you? You saw that actually part of the UK's fall was down to the fact that we're importing this stuff from overseas. That is one of those questions. So, you know, it's not immediately clear that though Germany is down 30% and the UK down 40%, that's all because of green measures. It's other things as well, the change in the fabric of the economy. Then you've got France down, Italy down as well. But now if we add on other countries, let's add on the US and see how this picture of global emissions, what we're doing is layering on these different emissions from different countries. We're going to get a sense of what this looks like across the world. So add on the US and actually suddenly it looked like it was falling, but now maybe it's rising. Actually, it's rising. So US emissions up by 5% over this period. Add on a few other countries like Japan, like Canada. Canada up by 22%. So a lot of mining uh, happening in Canada at the moment, a lot of industry. Uh, and then other countries as well, for instance, China. And it just stands out enormously there, doesn't it? So China up by 300% in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions from China and India up by 200% as well. And you can probably barely make out the UK and other bits of Europe there at the bottom, a tiny sliver set against this massive mountain of greenhouse gas emissions from all over the world. And this really is the big story. The UK is statistically pretty insignificant when it comes to all of this. Yes, those emissions might be falling, but the big picture across the world is that actually greenhouse gas emissions are going up and up and up, and no one is quite sure when they're going to stop going up.